So this class is on basics of ultrasound and pregnancy. First, we will see the basics of early pregnancy ultrasound. These are the following structures that you will see in an early pregnancy scan. A gestational sac. Gestational sac has fluid inside. Fluid on ultrasonography looks black or anechoic. So it is a circular ring-like structure with black anechoic area inside. And outside it, there is a hyperechoic area, which is a white area, which is the decidual reaction. This is also called double decidual sac sign. We will see images of all of this. So right now, this should be in your mind. Gestational sac is a black circle. Around it, there is a white reaction. And then before six weeks of scan, generally, you see this yolk sac without the embryo. Inside the gestational sac will be another sac, which is white ring with black fluid inside. Uh, hyperechoic ring is there with anechoic fluid inside. And then six weeks onwards, you will start seeing the fetal pole or the embryo with you, which you will measure the crown rump length and it will give you the period of gestation. So CRL is measured when you see the fetal pole. When you see fetal pole, generally in a healthy pregnancy, you will see the cardiac activity uh, right at the time you see a fetal pole of two millimeters. But some pregnancies, you will see it later. Those are called Till you see a cardiac activity in the embryo, it is called a pregnancy of unknown viability. And when it is called miscarriage, is a subject of the next class. We will discuss this that in the next class. And then amniotic sac or double bleb sign. This is not always seen in pregnancy, but sometimes just after the yolk sac appears and before the embryo is properly seen, you see a double bleb sign. Sometimes even after the embryo is seen, embryo is seen, you see this double bleb sign. Now, embryo, the fetal pole is not present inside the yolk sac. It is present in the amniotic sac. So you see two blebs and one of the blebs has the fetus or the uh, embryo and that is the amniotic sac and the adjacent sac is the yolk sac. Yolk sac is always more clearly visible. Now, before you understand pregnancy ultrasound, you have to see what a uterus looks like on TVS. This is a transvaginal scan. That is the uterus. Now, how do you know it is a transvaginal scan? The probe is small. If it is a transabdominal scan, the probe will be like this. The probe area will be like the abdominal probe. Isn't it? This is what the abdominal probe is like, not a proper diagram. And a TVS probe is like this. So this is a TVS scan and that's the uterus. This is the body of the uterus, the myometrium. This part is the cervix. From here, you can say is the cervix and this is the endometrium. Here, if she gets pregnant, this is where you see a gestational sac. Inside it will be black and outside will be white. Another picture of a uterus. Now, this is trilaminar endometrium. This is a thin endometrium. This is not a part of today's discussion. We'll have a basics on uh, gynecologic ultrasound also where we'll discuss what is this endometrium and what is this endometrium. Right, this is a picture of gestational sac. Now, ignore this part right now. Just see that there is a black circle. Now, it depends on which section you are taking. This is a sagittal section. What is a sagittal section? When you see uterus, the fundus and the cervix in the same view, it is a sagittal section. But if I rotate my probe, if I bring the fundus here and I rotate my probe, you will see a coronal view. This looks like a sagittal view, right? And here you say, see an oblong gestational sac with a prominent, this is the double decidual sac sign. This white area is the decidual reaction. This is characteristic of gestational sac. So first sign is a gestational sac with a decidual reaction. Again, here you can see a yolk sac because I haven't got a very early ultrasound picture. You see the yolk sac, but what I wanted to show you here is this white line of decidual reaction. Right? That's the decidual reaction around this gestational sac. Gestational sac generally is circular, can be oblong, can be a little uh, crescent shaped. It does not matter, but, but if it is very irregular and the decidual reaction is very poor, broken at places, then it is a pregnancy of unknown viability or suspicious uh, of missed abortion. Right? These are all, these look like viable pregnancies. Pseudo gestational sac. Now, since you have a gestational sac, there is also something called pseudo gestational sac, which is seen in ectopic pregnancies. In ectopic pregnancies, the gestational sac is in the fallopian tube or elsewhere. And in the uterus, there is an intense decidual reaction. There is area stellar reaction, which is because of the HCG produced by the uh, gestational sac, there's a lot of progesterone produced by the corpus luteum, which brings about decidualization of the endometrium. So, in a pseudo gestational sac, what happens? There is no embryo. The sac that you see in the uterus does not have embryo. It is just area stellar reaction is there. Intense area stellar reaction is there. There is decidualization and there's a small amount of fluid collection. 
which looks like a gestational sac, but it does not have the features of a gestational sac, like an intense choreodecidual reaction around it. There is area still a reaction, but it is present everywhere. It is not around the sac. It's just a fluid filled space, which is pseudo gestational sac. So I'll show you pictures of pseudo gestational sac. So you see endometrium is nicely decidualized. Right, it's a thick endometrium. Here also nice decidualization of the endometrium is there. You see a thick endometrium, but a simple fluid-filled space is there. Here also see this space. This is a this looks very characteristic of pseudo G sac. It's not a true gestational sac. So one is that you don't have the intense choreodecidual reaction which you have elsewhere, right? In the other images. The white area is localized around the gestational sac. It is not throughout the cavity that you have the white reaction. In gestational sac, that's not characteristic. What is characteristic? That you don't have the double decidual ring sign in a pseudo gestational sac. Plus, it can be irregular. Like here, it's a oblong cavity. It's not like a gestational sac. No embryo. And specifically, very important, if you see embryo or yolk sac in the gestational sac. It is not a pseudo G-sac. It is ruled out. It is a G-sac. If you see an ectopic pregnancy with a G-sac, it is a heterotopic pregnancy. Uh, don't worry about that right now. We'll see that in ectopic gestation class. So if embryo or yolk sac is there, you cannot call it pseudo G-sac. Pseudo G-sac should be, may or may not be irregular. It should not have embryo or yolk sac and it should not have a decidual reaction. That is when you call it a pseudo G-sac. Both the cases, if it is doubtful, what you do is you call her one week later and you, the picture will be more clear. Like in a normal G-sac, you will start seeing yolk sac and embryo. Now, yolk sac. The previous images had, see this beautiful picture. That's the endometrium. There is nice intense choreodecidual reaction around it. You can see this. And there's a proper circle, white circle with black fluid inside. This is the yolk sac which you see before six weeks. Then you see the embryo. Now that's a picture of six weeks, four days here. Based on the crown drum length, they have given a period of gestation of six weeks, four days. So at six weeks, four days, you see the gestational sac, you see yolk sac, and this is the CRL. In this CRL, it is if it's a healthy pregnancy, very nicely you'll see a cardiac activity here. You see two lines and those two lines are flickering at a regular interval. That's the cardiac activity. And then you say it is a very nice pregnancy of six weeks, four days. This is a bigger pregnancy where the yolk sac is disappearing. Now, if you want to know diagrammatically, this is what the amniotic sac will be like. There'll be a sac around it. That's the amniotic sac. And somewhere here you will see a yolk sac if you have a good resolution. But at nine weeks, it is unlikely to see a yolk sac and a amniotic sac. This is a nine-week pregnancy. I want to remove this. I don't know how to remove it because it was a nice picture. Anyway, so this is a embryo of nine weeks and here you will definitely see a cardiac activity, but the yolk sac is gone. Now what I want you to see is this double bleb sign. This is the yolk sac which had appeared earlier and now is that there's an amniotic sac also. And in this picture, you see a small embryo here, they're saying. So embryo will not be present in the yolk sac. I know what, I don't know what they have labeled, but embryo has to be in the amniotic sac here or here somewhere, but not in the yolk sac. Now in, in this picture, the embryo is quite clear. This is the amniotic sac. This is the yolk sac. This is the embryo. This has to be a pregnancy of six weeks, very close to six weeks, not more than six weeks. And that's the gestational sac with a good decidual reaction around it. So all the signs are seen in this image. That's a double blood sign. See that 5.5 .5 means five weeks, five days to six weeks. So let's just revise what all we see. Up to four weeks, three days which is she has just missed her period for three days, you will not see anything on the ultrasound. After four plus three weeks, you may see a very small gestational sac and a double decidual sac sign. A sac is there and then there is a white ring around it. This is double sac, one sac, two sacs are there, double decidual sac sign. Up to 5.5 .5 weeks, gestational sac should be visible by this time and the choreodecidual reaction should be seen. 5.5 to 6 weeks, 5 weeks, 5 days to 6 weeks, you see a yolk sac. Gestational sac is 6 millimeters <coughs> and double bleb sign sometimes is seen. After 6 weeks, fetal pole may be identifiable. Fetal heart should be present. <coughs> Sorry for this.
So this is when you also see the petal heart rate of 100 to 115 beats per minute. The rate is not very important as of now. Gestational sac is around 10 millimeters. Now these dimensions, these uh, are not very important. They are there in the ultrasound menu. Uh, right GSAC, they'll say this is 10 millimeters and it corresponds to six weeks. Six weeks, five days, a CRL of five millimeter. Seven to eight weeks, the CRL crown rump length, the embryo is of 11 to 16 millimeters, very nicely seen. And you will be able to differentiate between the capillary and caudal poles. Now, eight to nine weeks, CRL is this limb buds appear. So I want to show you a picture of how limb buds, what limb buds look like. This, you can see nicely that this is the cephalic and this is the caudal and the resolution is so good that you see the amniotic sac also all around it. The yolk sac is not seen any longer. These are the upper limb buds and these are the lower limb buds. And that's something called rhombin cephalon. In the head, there's a hypoechoic area, which is called rhombin cephalon, the early developing brain. Right. So limb buds have appeared. Head can be seen separate from the body. Nine to 10 weeks, CRLS 23 to 32 heart rate is there. Fetal movements can be seen. Developing embryonic rhombin cephalon is there. Nuchal translucency, you start to see it from 10 weeks, but you will be able to uh, measure it properly and give the risk of aneuploidies only after 11 weeks. So those are your limb buds. This is the rhombin cephalon seen in the earlier image also. You can see this is the, this is a sagittal section. Sagittal view, not a section. Sagittal view. That's the CRL. This is the head. This is the rump. That's the developing umbilical cord. These are lower limb buds. The upper limb buds are not seen. They must be somewhere here. Now you see the choreodesidal reaction again very properly seen. But here you see it is thickening. So this probably is the place of developing placenta. Then the next class we'll see nuchal translucency.